Well, hello and welcome once again to the Lucy Mackenzie Humane Society um, and a glorious day uh, and I just have the most, I'm going to start off with the most wonderful couple of little dogs who um, I'm just enjoying very much and uh, the um, young lady who is helping us today, Shelby. Um, and so let me tell you a little, well, first of all, please get a pen and pencil. You can write down our telephone, whoops, write down our telephone number, uh, you know, or whatever you want, our email, all of those important things that will come on the screen because we have to um, tell you all about them. And I'm sure there's somebody today, absolutely, who's going to just, you're going to, your heart is going to turn over and you're going to say, I have to have that wonderful, wonderful little creature. So here we have King. King, they want to see your front, right? And Emma. And they are sort of a, a mix. Let me see. We came to the conclusion that they were Shih Tzu uh, mixes and probably had some Lhasa Apso in them. Uh, they are now, uh, six years old. And um, they were with someone who sh she just felt she couldn't look after them properly. Uh, they do need to have a bit of grooming, so they'll need to go to the doggy parlor. Uh, beauty parlor every now and again um, but otherwise um, they're, they're just very sweet and uh, very friendly um, oopsie sorry darling she's a little shyer she's a little shyer so you'll have to excuse me I didn't mean to do that that's right she came to see oh yes that's right she said I'm not really and I love you so um, they they're really I think they've been here for about a month now and I don't know why because they're charming and as Shelby said they would be love to go walking around town with you um, because they like a bit of attention and um, presumably you might like a bit of attention too so please come and see them King and Emma they're just waiting for you uh, waiting for you to um, take them home and love them and give them a wonderful life and you know the little dogs they've got many years in them isn't that right so just good little girl there and they love kisses and hugs and all of that sort of thing. So please come and see them and, and also wait to see what, who else we've got. Um, we have some dogs that are give ups and that's always a bit sad or has a sad story behind it. So please be ready, as I say, to open your heart and um, help these dogs and cats to find their forever home. So, to this, now we're starting off with uh, Tahiti. Hey Tahiti, can you turn around here? So Tahiti is in here, this room with um, um, Nara. Nara is the white cat in Tahiti. And they are both in here because they really don't like other cats, but they've been put here so they're just keeping clear of each other. They're being very good really, very well behaved. and. Nara takes one side of the room and Tahiti takes the other side of the room and then they change around and um, so they seem to be managing but they would prefer to be um, only, ca uh, only cats if they could be. I'm not sure about dogs, you would have to find out. And this, and see this beauty here? Uh, hello darling, I'm just going to pull this up a little bit so that Paula Paula's behind the camera, by the way, as always. And, oh, isn't that beautiful? Wait a minute, should I get this up? A little more. A little more, there. there How's that? Isn't, aren't we beautiful? Yes. Yes, but, but they're both beautiful. I mean, we can't make differences here between them, we, animals, we have to say. They're all beautiful to me. And they all desperately want homes. And um, we can't all be a, an outstanding white fluffy cat. Some of us are just tabbies, and that's fine too. So uh, they are very uh, adaptable and very ready to go to a new home. And if, so if you take the good thing about this little room is if you take one, they're not going to be mind being left alone because both of them really prefer to be um, only cats. Whoops. Yes, you're a bit nervous, aren't you, darling? But don't worry about it. Do you want to come up here? Hmm? Do you want to come up here? That's my pen. Aren't you a sweetheart? Okay. Let's see, Tara, just give us a look. Just come on, sweetie. Just no, just no. Going in. So please come and see them. They are just slightly in a room off by themselves. But um, 
as you can see, they are <laughs> staring at each other right now. <laughs> so please come and see if one of them couldn't be your best buddy forevermore. So now I'm introducing, we're having a mix today, cats, dogs, cats, dogs. This is Suki, and uh, Suki's a senior dog. Uh, that's fine. I'm a senior person, and uh, nothing wrong with being senior. And she's still got many, many years to give you happiness. So please don't worry about that. I've spent 40 years adopting older dogs, and I can tell you that they are just the best. And Suki is it's like, isn't it, sweetheart? And she said, of course I'm the best. And I'm very pretty. I'm this sort of lovely brown and fawn with a little bit of white on me. Very soft. She's very, very soft. Um, now, Suki, as you can see, is a little bit here, maybe a bit too much just here. So we do need to be on a diet and lots of exercise. And we love walkies, don't we, Suki? You love walkies, darling, don't you? Absolutely, you love walkies, she said, absolutely. And, uh, you know, not, not hiking up a mountain right away because I do have to get myself a little slimmer uh, before I can do a mountain, but we could go a quarter of the way up the mountain and then the next, you know, week or two later, we could do the half mountain and then, believe it or not, after a month or so, when I'm really trimmed down and, you know, and I just already around here, we'll do the whole mountain. And that's your Suki for you. A uh, very, very willing, loving dog. Um, would prefer to be an only dog. We don't know about cats, I suppose. Uh, probably not a great fit for cats. No, no. I think she just wants to be on her own by, you know, by herself. And, um, she just wants attention, of course, and love, and she will give it back to you. Absolute, look at this. Absolutely, she will just be so wonderful for you. And so if you're feeling maybe a trifle lonely or that you would really like to do something for the canine world, here's just your opportunity. Dear Suki, and I'm sure you won't be here next month, Suki, because you're so beautiful. So just a beautiful, beautiful dog and uh, with a little work and a little less food and a little more exercise, oh my, you'll have a winner. So this is Mulan. Um, Mulan has a very sad history. Uh, he was found in an abandoned house, uh, most likely left behind. Um, please, please, viewers, don't ever do that. If you can't take your cat with you or your dog with you, please bring it to us and we will, we will take it in and look after it. But don't just abandon an animal. Suddenly its family's gone, its food's gone, its water's gone. It has no idea what's happening and it's very likely to be killed eventually by foxes or something like that. And it's not that, it's also the emotional distress this animal has been through. Anyway, Moulin, we think, is quite young, maybe a year or two years old. Um, gorgeous markings. I mean, they're ginger and black and just beautiful. And um, shy, of course, because she's been through a great deal. Um, and uh, as I say, she's been abandoned and had not a clue what was happening until somebody found her and brought her here. Um, but she has terrific potential. Um, and probably would be okay with other cats, um, but certainly would love to be an only cat too, because having been abandoned, she really wants to feel that she is very, very loved and the center of attention. Isn't that right, Mulan, dear? Um, see, she knows her name. She knows I'm talking about her. Don't you, darling? Hmm? Can we say hello, little hello there? She will retire, she will require a little you know, special attention, probably a lot of patience. But I, and I also think, looking at this cat, I think she's, she's pretty savvy about life. I think she's clever and that you will have a lot of fun with her. Um, she's going to have to learn your ways of life and you're going to have to learn how she feels about that. But I think for her to be in a, in a happy, healthy, warm home, especially in the winter, with some folks who obviously love her, 
I think would be the very best thing that could possibly happen to this animal. So please come and see Moulin and I know you'll take her home. So this is Lincoln and according to the, his description he is bold, affectionate, clever, he's going to turn around just in a minute, loves to play and as Paula and I have just found out he's a great conversationalist. He's about a year and a half old and as you can see he just loves to have attention um, and he was really having a great chit chat with us, weren't you sweetheart? Yes, and he says, really, really, viewers, please, I want to get out of here. I, I just really, um, I need to be in my own place. Uh, and, and to be honest, I need to really boss people around because that's the sort of cat I am. I'm very self-confident and uh, also terribly handsome. Definitely the handsomest cat in here. Yeah, well, you do have a lot of self-confidence, I can say that. But he loves to be cuddled. And he said, of course, if you'd like to have me up on your bed at night, it would be bliss. But if you don't want that, then I could put up with it. But I'm just a wonderful cat. And I do have, unlike Paul Moulin, I do have a lot of self-confidence for a cat who's one and a half years old. And what was that? What did you say? Oh, a sense of humor. Sorry, that's very important. A great sense of humor. And so you would have fun with him. Likes his toys. And, um, but most of all, I think this cat likes people, less company, likes people around and um, telling them, likes telling them what to do, um, likes to hear how you did at work, you know, for the day or if you work at night, he'll be there in the morning to say, how did it all go? Um, and a nice purr. Ooh, ooh, yes, I'm just, that's a nice little purr. Uh, so I think you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong, can you, sweetie? No, no. Just a very, very, very sweet dog. All right, sweet dog. I've got muddled up. I bet, oh, beg your pardon. I don't think he heard. Very, very sweet cat. All right, please come and see him. All right, well, this is Poe. Isn't he beautiful? Have you come to say hello to Roz? Come on then, sweetheart. Yeah, come on. Another black and white one. Yes. Yes, do you want to come? Oh, sit on me, Po. Po, come, come and sit on me. Huh? Come on. What's going on there? Ooh. Very pretty. I love the face markings. Very, uh, very affectionate. Um, and uh, he's about a year and a half old. Um, neutered, of course. Everybody who goes out of here. Well, I mean, every animal who goes out of here is spayed or neutered. Now, now we've got another black one there black and white one there. Look at that. They must be, they must be related because they look like twins, don't they? Oh, do you, how do, what do you think about that big eye looking at you? Come on. Come on. Yes. And, oh, and, and Poe has got little white, and these are twins. They've got very, they've got white underneath their chins and on their chests as well. Very attractive. Maybe, maybe they could go together. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You could take twins home and what fun you'd have. And they would be almost identical twins. So they would be playing all those games identical twins play. No, I'm not Poe, I'm Mo or something like that. Um, look at that. I haven't seen markings like that for a oh, long time. Anyway, they're both very ready to go home. They're both very affectionate, aren't you Poe? He said, yeah, I'm the man, I'm the cat, but you've got to be looked at. Come on, come on. Do you want me to play with that? Hmm? Yes. Does it smell good? Does it smell good? Yes, that's a good boy, isn't it? Aren't you pretty one? Can you come around the other side? Ooh, and then we can see the camera. Can you look at the camera? Say, hi, folks. Hello, everybody. How are you? How oh, are you? Hmm? I'm Poe. I want to go home. Very beautiful. Right. Well, here we have a very, I want to say a very beautiful lady. Uh, a very beautiful lady dog. Bitch, rather. And, oh, hello, Monarch. Well, there's a Monarch come to join us. Yay. Um, so, uh, she's, she's very lovely. She is a mixed breed. Um, Australian Aussie, Aussie yeah, Shepherd, Australian Shepherd and something else 
gorgeous coloring, gorgeous coloring. Um, she needs a lot of exercise. She is a little bit overweight, um, so she would love walkies. Um, be, have to be on a leash, you know, they, they like to run, these dogs. And she would love it if she had a fenced-in yard so she could run. Um, do we know about anything about her with other dogs? Not good with other dogs. Not good. Wants to be an only dog. Yes. Well, that's good to know. Um, but it's, uh, it's also a wonderful way if you just find it difficult sometimes to think, oh, I can't be bothered to go out for a walk. Well, if you have a dog, you have to go out for a walk, definitely hopefully with the, this dog twice a day, morning and afternoon. Um, and it's such fun taking a dog for a walk because it gives your walk a purpose, apart from keeping healthy, which all the medical world is now saying that walking is so good for you and your health. So um, then she does need, her coat needs attention, so she needs to be brushed. And um, there's, a, there's a comb that you can get which sort of takes out some of the under fur because you see she's got two coats. She's double coated, is she? Yes. Yes. So there's a lot of, and look at this magnificent tail. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely lovely. Um, so she said, I love to be brushed and I need to be brushed. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'm a dog with, requires very little, just attention and love and exercise. Uh, and a home. She's on a um, uh, she's on a, a diet because she does have some skin problems. So that's why it's important that you have to look after her coat. But it's such a magnificent coat; it would just be a joy uh, to to do that every day. I would love it. And look at the lovely look down here, the lovely feathers here. It's so pretty, isn't it, Petra? Can you say hello? Have you got something I can give her? Okay, here, Petra, here. Oh, she said, yes, I love treats. I love treats. And um, so, and she said, you know, I think what I'd really like to would be go to good doggy obedience classes. Um, and then after that, <laughs> I could actually do doggy, um, um, what you might call it? The, agility? The, agility, yes. So, yeah, sorry, 80 years old, the brain doesn't quite remember these things. So, um, She'd like to do agility too. I just got that feeling about her. And definitely, as I say, lots of exercise, but also lots and lots and lots of cuddling. I just feel this dog desperately needs attention. She was given up. And so she's a bit bewildered about why she's here. And um, I suppose you could say that about us. Oh, <laughs> why are we here? <laughs> well, I know why I'm here. And Paula's behind the camera there, and Shelby's here, and everybody, this Lucy McKenzie is here. We're all here to find these wonderful animals' homes. And so, to conclude, I would like to thank everybody who watches the program and comes to give one of the animals or another one that you haven't seen today homes. You are so important to us. And if you can't actually take an animal, we love your money. We can use that always. And there are all sorts of things like paper towels and food and all sorts of things that we can do with. Um, and we're very grateful for. So um, from us all, Paula behind the camera and Shelby helping with the dogs and Amy helping with everything and Jackie who runs uh, everybody here from Lucy McKenzie says thank you have a wonderful wonderful month until we see you again and please come you're most welcome here anytime thank you so much mm -hmm.